Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. It's Deborah Lynn here in the studio. You guys, if it's your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. I'm going to do another abstract. This time, I'm not gonna do so many layers. I'm gonna to talk to you more about open spaces. I'm gonna be using a little bit smaller brush to show you that if you use a smaller brush, you're able to get a little bit more tighter. If you use a larger brush, you're gonna have a lot more brush to work with and it could close your painting in too much. So I don't know what's going on. Some of you guys are over there in the group and I'm seeing that you guys are not being able to retain some spaces of white. So I thought, let's address that. So let I'm gonna just let myself go here and do a little bit of an intuitive piece, but try to retain a lot of white spaces for you guys so you guys can get a really good feel of a painting that has a lot of breathing space. So what I'm doing is I'm working very intuitive right now. I have got my Magello Mission Gold paints out. I've got my greenish yellow going, okay? There is absolutely nothing. There's, I'm not following a picture. Uh, I'm just putting paint down. And sometimes you're like so scared to tackle a piece of paper, especially if it's a half a sheet like what I have down here. This is an Arches 140 pound, 100% uh, cotton piece of paper. Again, it's a half a sheet. Nothing to be afraid of. If anything, you guys, it gives you so much freedom. If you're working on a small sheet of paper, think about it, you guys. You're working on a small sheet of paper. How are you supposed to get loose? Where's the freedom in that? That's great for a small, maybe one stem, or maybe it's a little bird, or you know what I mean? If you want to do uh, something bold and beautiful and loose and freeing, go get yourself a sheet of watercolor paper. I think this one, now I bought this sheet quite a while ago. I found it, I found it in my stash and it had a price tag of $7.99 on it at Hobby Lobby, okay? $7.99 is not much. And at that time, I don't think they're doing it like they used to, but they used to have a 40 off coupon and I was able to get it 40 off. I don't know if they're still doing that. I think they're doing maybe 20 off. I'm not even sure. I've been, I've been, I've been doing a lot of my purchasing online instead of going and running to the store and picking up some stuff. So I don't even know what kind of specials they're running. So um, but even if you paid full price for one sheet of paper and it was $7.99 and you cut that sheet of paper in half, that's really not a bad price for freedom. Okay. Everybody wants freedom, right? Can we all agree? We like our freedom. Okay. A large piece of paper is going to be giving you that. The smaller you go the tighter it's gonna get. So keep that in mind. I am just randomly putting color down. Now, my main focus is the top edge, dropping the pigment in from the top edge. So I'm going into my palette and I've got a wet brush and I'm digging into that pigment and I'm grabbing that pigment and it's got a lot of water on it and I'm just dumping it into the top edge of that paper and letting it flow down. Now I have half to coax it along at the bottom. And you know, cause there might, th that, pa that paintbrush that I'm using right now is not my big quill that I would typically use. So I'm not getting the volume of water that I would typically get with my big quill. Now, this is a size 12 Windsor Newton Professional Sable Brush. It holds a lot of water, but doesn't hold enough. But it's going to give me a lot more controlled effect. So, 
It's something to think about. It's nice to have all the different kinds of tools that you may need when you're working very loose uh, watercolor, okay? So get yourself all different kinds of quills, different sizes. You might want some smaller ones, medium ones, and monster ones for when you're doing a full sheet of paper. Yes, you're going to eventually move to a full sheet of paper because once you do that, you're going to be like, whoa, this is awesome. You're going to love it. There's so much freedom. Please do not be scared. Please do not be scared of a big piece of paper. I hear it so much. And it just breaks my heart that there's so much fear in that. Um, there's so much freedom in it. So keep that in mind. Do it for yourself. Just take the plunge, okay? Do this wash effect that I'm doing right now. Dump that, let the, let the water, the colors just you know run down the sheet of paper and coax them along but retain the open spaces you can you can tighten it up more if you don't like bigger the big spaces like i have you can make them a little bit smaller if you want um that's all to however you want it how, you're the artist you do your thing okay i'm just giving you suggestions of how i go about um keeping things very loose and free now I did, I, I've already, right now, the colors that I have dropped in are olive green, greenish yellow. Both of those are from Magello Mission Gold. And I'm also dropped in Mission Gold's Peacock Blue. Um, I did, in the very, very beginning, there was some quinacridone gold from Danielle Smith. I always say Danielle. It's not Danielle, it's Daniel. <laughs> Don't know why I do that. Anyway. He would probably not be happy if he heard that. So it's Daniel, Daniel Smith. Okay, so the quinacridone gold came into play in the very beginning. Um, I'm using it right now. I'm using the edge of the tube of the paint of the Daniel Smith watercolors. And that tube has got a metal edge. And that tube has got paint all over that metal edge. And all I'm doing is going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And what it's doing is it's scoring into that paper and putting little lines in there and it's dropping pigment. Now, if you do this on pulp paper, which is just cheap, inexpensive Strathmore or Canson. Oh God, I don't like Canson at all. If you're using that, you're going to rip your paper. First of all, your paper is not going to be able to handle this much water. Second of all, you're going to ha you can't do it. You're going to have to go out and get yourself and get yourself a sheet of paper. Just go out and get yourself a sheet of paper and say, "Today's my day for freedom." And go bless yourself with a piece of paper and have fun. Just Put it, tear, just cut it right in half or tear it in half and have fun. So right now, let's see, where am I with this painting? I'm busy yapping here. So now I'm going in with a palette knife. Now I am not using the flat part of the palette knife. I am using the edge of this palette knife. And I'm just going in and I'm texturizing the center with that pigment that's already on the paper that's still wet, I'm just putting in more lines. Now, you might be thinking, oh my God, she's using a palette knife with watercolor. Who the heck uses a palette knife with watercolor? I do. I do. And you know what? If you are the type of person that is so rigid that you're having such a hard time loosening up Go watch my landscape uh, videos. Uh, I used a lot of palette knife with that. And you can't be anything but loose when you're using a palette knife. It's hard. It's hard to be precise. You just have to roll with it. And um, you get cool effects when you use 
a palette knife in watercolor. And I'm just waiting for the perfect person to contact me about uh, an idea I have for palette knives. Um, or maybe I will uh, get it all patented myself and do something with it. But I've got a really cool idea. And I want to... I want to someday address that and be using my own design for palette knives and uh, that would be really cool. That's one of my big goals for the future. I've got lots of goals, you guys. Right now, I'm starting, I, I, I'm, I've, got, I've got you guys going over to, to my Facebook group. I've got a Facebook group for you guys to go, to go join, okay? doesn't cost you anything to be in the group. I'm in the group, I'm there almost every day, as, as much as I can be, okay? I may need to get some moderators in there to help me, but right now, there's like 400 and some of you, okay? And it's growing every day. And go over there, doesn't cost anything, you can be in the group, you can post your pictures you've been working on, I can see what you're doing. It helps me figure out what I need to do with my YouTubes and what to address with you guys. Right now, I've got a uh, mm, vermilion going down, okay? And I'm just building uh, some more shapes here. So just go over there. Uh, I'll let you into the group and uh, you can post your artwork. If you want critique from it, let me know. Um, you know, and, uh, and, and some of you guys are afraid to post your artwork. Everybody is learning. Everybody wants to learn how to paint loose and they're having a hard time finding somebody to teach this to them and to really loosen up, okay? And I'm hoping that I can help you guys, okay? So go over there. Um, I've got that. You can go to my Instagram. Both places will help you be able to also see my actual um, artwork. You know, right now you'll see it kind of scrolling and, and moving on the screen, but it's hard to see it in full-blown image. So you'll have to see that on Instagram or over there in the Facebook group. Eventually, I want to get a website built. Of course, the, the type of website that I want is going to cost me a small fortune. So I'm saving all my money. Uh, so everything that I'm making here uh, for my affiliates with Amazon or with uh, just my YouTube in general from the ads, um, that's all going to go towards my new website, which is going to benefit you guys. Um, it. And that will be hopefully coming here in the near future. And I want to eventually have a subscription for you guys so that you can, we can get into a little bit more in-depth stuff. And uh, I also want to start a, a watercolor magazine. And that would be uh, something, I mean, I have all these little goals that I want to achieve. And I think we all need to do that. We all need to be reaching for the stars with what do we want to do with our art? Do we want, do we want to sell our art? Do we want to make textiles with our art? Do we want to just use it as a hobby and just enjoy it? You know, all those are great, but we, you know, if you want to do something with it, then you're going to have to start setting some goals for yourself and start shooting for the stars and start a obtaining them. So, and uh, what am I, where am I at now with this painting? So now I have just, I'm just loosening things up with a larger quill, smoothing out some of the edges. It's a little bit easier to do with the larger quill than it is with that 12 inch sable brush. And over on that side, I made some rays. I'm in this mode with this mark making and now ray making. It's what's going on with my art. It's kind of funny how we all go on this kick 
and we'll be doing one thing for a while and having fun with it and then we'll go try something else and it's fun okay so now my flowers are taking a turn literally they're spinning they're turning Whoop. i'm just making swishy marks with it so it kind of looks like almost like a shape of a bearded iris kind of look but it isn't because I don't know what these flowers are. They're just made up, imaginary, kind of weird looking flowers. And by doing that, I created a splatter effect with my paints, which ended up being kind of cool. And I'm embracing it. And I'm going to even throw some more paint down. So that's where I am, you guys. Eventually, I want to do all that. Um, but Rome wasn't built in a day, now was it? So one thing at a time. No, And people are asking me, do you sell your artwork? Not at the moment. Because like I said, I need to create inventory for my website. Uh, because they're going to be asking for images and stuff to post on there for sale. And so that's what I'm working on right now. So like this piece that you see here, that'll eventually be up for sale. I'll probably have uh, copies made of it. Only like, you know, might only be like 25 copies available. Um, and then the original. I'll do something like that. And then there'll probably be merchandise. I might do something like that. So I'm busy thinking of all kinds of things that I can do with my art. I hope you guys are doing the same thing also. And I'm just throwing in more detail here. Just dropping in some depth. Now the colors that I've, I've used in this um, painting are the following. Uh, the only one that is Daniel Smith is the Quinacridum Gold. And that was done in the very beginning. I don't use much of it. I used it in the middle for the texture on those flowers. But everything else is Magello Mission Gold. And those colors are light red, permanent yellow light, lemon yellow, greenish yellow, olive green, peacock blue, vermilion, and orange. And if you ask me, what colors did you use on your painting? <laughs> then I will know that you didn't listen to the whole video. So, then uh, I'm gonna put you in timeout. <laughs> Okay, I'm making the I'm making some more rays, you guys. I'm making my rays. This is fun. Doing those lines is fun. Like I said, you have a big piece of paper and you could just have fun. It's all about expressing yourself. I find it hard to express myself on a tiny sheet of paper. It just doesn't work very well. I guess once you once you start painting on a larger piece of paper, it's hard to go to a tiny piece of paper and work. It really is. And now I have some bleed proof white and I'm just kind of, I had some spots at the bottom and I had to correct those a little bit, but I'm also using that white also on top of the pigment and the white paper to kind of just intensify the white. So there is some streaks of white going on. And it's just very light-handed, barely touching the paper. Look at how murky it makes the water, though. That bleed-proof white can muddy up things so quickly. It muddied up that water in two seconds. That's what it can do to your painting. So once it goes down, try not to touch it. If you touch it and disturb it, you could get mud. And I've seen some paintings 
in the group where I'm seeing people playing around with their bleed proof too much and they're making mud. So be careful with that. I can't stress it enough. And if you can't play by the rules, I'm going to take your bleed proof white away from you. <laughs> You're not going to be able to get it until you learn how to listen. And now I'm just putting in some little, I'm, you guys, I'm joking with you. But I'm going in and I'm putting some lemon yellow in. And it's just brighter and perky. It's just a vibrant color. And I'm just making like little dots so it looks like little stamens coming into play. And now I'm just making that petal shape that kind of is spilling over again kind of like a bearded iris again or a, you know how they just have those big floppy um, petals I'm just kind of playing off of that on that one also and now I have my liner and I'm just going in with some green and I'm just dropping in some pigment into those stems and I'm just going to start building that up a little bit here You guys, leave me a comment. Let me let me know what you think of the painting. Uh, if you got some requests of what you'd like to see, I'd be interested to hear what you would like me to maybe paint. I'm open to suggestions. I'm not sure if I'll agree with all of them, but I'm willing to listen. Somebody asked me to do a commission piece for them and they want umbrellas, like beach umbrellas. <laughs> I'm like, well, um, they might end up looking like flowers. Um, so she just started laughing. So I don't know how that's going to work out. And I'm not one to make uh, beach scenes with uh, umbrellas. Not yet, anyway. I'm in this flower thing. And now I'm making my one of my little uh, droopy twiggy thingies here. I don't know what this thing is, you guys. And I end up making one in the background that kind of looks kind of shadowy in the background. Doesn't have much detail and it's barely visible because um, it's in the background. Um, but I just, it's just some kind of little added something to my painting and it kind of pulls your eye downward and let's see what am I doing here I'm grabbing some green and I'm building those stems there those two peas those two are fighting with me because there's so much water sitting there and what it's doing is it just keeps it, that color, that pigment just keeps spreading out. It just seems like the minute I put it down, it just spreads out. I put it down, it spreads out. So those never ever get really fully defined, which is just what it is. And I'm just adding some little like buds and little shapes on this piece right here that I put in. And I have just mixed some of the olive green and the light red together to make that color. Kind of like a green kind of brown color.
and it's it's not like I'm pulling in a completely different color. I'm mixing with what I already have. That way everything stays harmoniously together. Do you understand what I'm saying? It just it's not like I'm bringing in a new element. I don't want to do that. I will create the color or pigment from what I already have used in this painting. And by using that liner also, you know, the thing is an inch and a half long. It's not gonna allow me to be too precise. So, and then put some tremors with it. Although my tremors have calmed down a lot, the neurologist put me on some good medication to calm things down. If you go back and look at some of my old footage, poof, I was in bad shape. But he's got things chilled out with me right now. So if you're also somebody that has tremors and has a hard time painting and you struggle, then girl you or sir, you need to follow me. I'll help you uh, get loose and work around that. Okay, you guys, I'm nearing the very end here. Of course, you're going to miss the very end where I add the other little faint uh, branch in the background. I end up doing that after the fact. Right now I'm just putting in some finishing touches and adding some more of that lemon yellow just to brighten things up in the stamen area. And that's my painting, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please drop me a message. Please subscribe. Please go over to my Facebook and join me over there. Join me over on the Instagram. And until next time, be safe. Stay well, you guys. And may God bless you mightily. Bye for now.